hey welcome to another video in this video i'm going to show you a technique i haven't seen anywhere on the internet for shopify team developer so this video is very important because you will learn something really cool in this video we will partially load the dynamic card now it might be confusing for you what i'm saying right now but you will understand when i show you what i mean so here is the thing when we add product to the card it is adding to the card it should open the card drawer and it should dynamically update the data in here. Now this data could come from card.json, but instead of that, let's load a partial data. The whole form that you have in here, which we designed in the previous video, should come from a liquid file. How would we do that? Imagine, okay, before I do, do that, let's do it step by step. When we click on add to card, if it was successful, I want to open the card, right? So let's see what we do. When we click on this, it fired an event, like an event of toggle the card. So let's fire the same event when the card was successful. If I come to my code in here, uh, let's open the main product form. This is our main product form. This is where we console.log when it is successful, right? Okay, cool. And let's keep this open. And also, I will open the drawer. This is the event of toggle card. So if we run this event exactly in here, okay, instead of this, I'm going to say this, that dollar sign dispatch, and we put the event of toggle card. We don't have to pass any value. I will save it for now. Now, as again, it sh we should run the team watch, and also npx run mix, or mix watch, something like this. Let's save the changes in here. Okay, it is uploading it. Now let's come here and let's refresh the page. Let's see if this is opening our cart. I'll close everything. Let's add product to the cart. It is opening this, but this is not, they didn't update it, the information. Now, what if there is an endpoint where I can send an Ajax request and give me only the cart information with all the HTML structure? Is there an endpoint for this? Yes, there is. I'll show you how. Now, before doing that, just to prove it is not updated, if I refresh the page, the quantity of the first product should be three now. Now, this one is three. Okay, cool. Now, after like opening, I want to send a request to an endpoint to grab all this data. How would we do this one? In Shopify, you can create a template without any content and you can send Ajax request to this one. Imagine if you come to the URL, in here, you would put a view and say cart, equal to cart, or mini cart, or cart drawer, or anything. Imagine if you would be able to do that. Yes, you can. So if you are saying something like this, make sure in your team directory, when I come here, in the template, we can create an index.cart.liquid. When we say index, it means the home page. The cart is the name that you pass in here. If it is mini cart, you just say mini cart. So in here, let's, let's put a H3 in here for now. Cart data. Now let's, okay, assuming it works. Like if I refresh this, it says cart data in here. Great, now this is loading the data from this template. Now, what about this menu and header and all this? Because we are loading a template, it is already using the layout theme in here as the master template. So what we do is we come here at the top, just write a layout. And in a set of layout name, write none. Now what none is going to do is it says we are not going to use any layout template. We just want the data. Now this time if I refresh it, this is the data. And if we view the source, it has only the data in here. Okay, great. Now we have built this endpoint for ourselves. So let's put the card information in here. The card information that we need with all the HTML structure. If I open card drawer, this is the card form. What I can do is I can copy everything in here and then I can paste it in this. Now if I come here, refresh it again, it is giving me my card information. How cool is that? But the good part is here, if I refresh it, it gave me only the form. That's why we call it partial. It is not a full like document. We are not loading the full document. It is very light in here. It just takes like a few KB 
to load this uh, cart information in here and the other good part is this is all dynamic it is coming from a liquid so in liquid you have access to everything okay that's cool now let's send an ajax request to this endpoint that we have here and we can replace we'll come let's come here let's go back to the home page let's replace the content of this this should be easy right let me go to product page so we are we can add to cart so if i come here this is our add to cart now let's do that if i come in my cart drawer let me just listen for an event in here if i come the same way that we have toggle cart if i say add cart updated dot window now we didn't write any event for now we are just listening so when some when someone fired this event let's call a function we call it update cart this is the function that you are going to call let's write that function in here the reason i put it in a function because it should re, should be reusable in the future when i update the cart i just call the function update cart and okay let me just put them in a new line so everything looks clean in here we call it update cart okay cool this is a function and this is reloading in here now let's put a, a, a little comment of uh, send fetch request to update the code let's see if we can auto complete no it cannot auto complete i'm just waiting for copilot so here is what we do we send a fetch request to which url first we put a slash so it go to the index and then we say view our uh, view equal to cart after doing this we are going to say then what happened now in here we respond it is not a json so it is a text so we say respond the text it will return that and then we can listen to that text in the second parameter in here okay good since this is responding the the HTML as a text we can say HTML in here or we can say card data now this card data will be available in here document.query.innerHTML uh, if we give an if this we create an ID for exactly this or this one the content of this will be updated okay so here is document.query we don't have this ID but instead of document.query as always, like we learned in the previous video, we are using Alpine.js. Why not we use the dollar sign refs and give it a key. I call it uh, cart content. So now let's create the ref in here. It is much easier to do this style. So instead of in here, instead of ID, we are writing x ref cart content. Now it is the same as we use specify ID. Since we use Alpine.js, it is much better to use like refs in here. Dot HTML. That's all we need to do. Now let's give it a try. If this work, then it should automatically update the card. Now here's the thing. We should fire this, this events too, like update card. Where do we fire this event? Again, we come here. The same way that we toggle the card. Before toggling, let's update the card. So when someone, uh, when this is like firing the event of update the cart, it, this one is going to fire a function. It is going to send the request to this URL, getting the information and then adding the information in here. Okay, let's come back. Now I will refresh my page. Currently, how many product do we have? Three for this one. Okay, now let's click add to cart. Okay, it is adding one more in here, except we have an error in here. Undefined update card. So expression, now, now let's see where we did something wrong. If I come to my code, card driver. Okay, this is our updated card. Yeah, we are listening to a card updated and we are calling this function. Uh, let's let's do what the error is saying. Expression card update. Okay, everything seems to be fine in here. Um, this one closing. Okay, we are sending an AJAX request to this URL. Yeah, instead of this, we forgot to put a dot in here. So let's come back. 
it should add product to the cart now let's open the cart and see how many we have okay we have four products for now now let's click add to cart it added to the cart now we have the html in here sorry this one that we pass in here should be cart data i forgot to rename this one but forgot to do this here now okay we should have five in here now it should be the last test since we are okay we have five let's add product to the cart it is six now let's add one more it is seven and everything in here will be updated automatically like not automatically of course manually in here but yeah that is how you partially load card and this is dynamic now to refactor you know we are writing all this form in here with all of this code see a lot of code in here now we can refactor it a little bit instead of the form that you have in here why not we have a snippet for this I can write render uh, I can call it cart form something like this and we say render something like this much easy right now let's create this cart form snippet I'll come here cart form dot liquid now uh, instead of the same thing we can do it in here so we repeat it I cut it from here and put it in this snippet file and we include it in both areas so the same we included in here we include this in here also sorry we should render it not include include is the old method of doing it now it works just fine see we have one snippet for cart form and this is the cart form that we have here now do you have the cart drawer both of them are using the same uh, in the first load it the liquid will load we don't have to worry about that because someone refreshed the page but on the second load not the second if someone like add product to the cart it is getting again from this ajax request and partially loading this data now let's refresh it and let's do one last test okay add to the cart it is adding product to the cart we have nine item one is here and eight of them is here so yeah i hope the video has been informative and you learn something there are much more things so i can teach you about like how you can load ajax using ajax and stuff like that but i think this is enough I and mean, this is this is like nice card that we have in here in the next video we are going to work on quantity update when we click on this increase and decrease and also how we can remove it so i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching i will see you in the next video